Okay, welcome to Northwest Wyoming. This is the highway between the east entrance of Yellowstone National Park and the town of Cody, Wyoming. We're up in the Absarica Mountains, uh, down there at the bottom of the valley, and off in the distance is the Shoshone River, which has cut this uh, beautiful canyon through these just exceptional uh, brown rocks, uh, big cliffs and hoodoos. And we're going to start here by making a few observations and then see if we can piece everything together. So what we have here are, looks like some rocks with um, at least different types of beds. We can see down below here we've got, um, let me put my stuff down so I can point some stuff out. Um, we've got some sandstones down here. So this is mainly a sandstone unit, a really sharp contact here. And then in the unit above, we have class, individual chunks of rock embedded in this deposit and all cemented together. If we look close at some of these, we can see vesicles, we can see gas bubbles. Um, these all look like they're mainly different types of volcanic rocks, uh, all glued together and just sort of a, a hodgepodge mixture of things. Um, this is a unit known as the Absarica Volcanics. This unit is uh, Eocene in age. It's about 50 million years old. And it formed at a time when, well before the Yellowstone volcano that we know today, uh, when much of this part of the western interior had big, huge, towering stratovolcanoes. And those stratovolcanoes um, were tall, big, imposing mountains and routinely shed off sediment through a variety of processes. Could have been floods, could be debris flows, uh, volcanic mud flows, which are called the haars. All sorts of sediments being shed off and it, out into the west. It was also a period of time when we had much wetter and warmer uh, climate than we do today. We can actually see one class right up here uh, that's maybe uh, almost half a meter or so in diameter. Then one above it that's even bigger. This one appears definitely a little more than a meter across. Um, there's a really cool fin of rock here that's separated from the main wall. This is called chimney rock. So there's a big fracture running down the backside and then frost wedging, freeze thaw cycles in the rock has sort of uh, separated this fin of rock from the main wall here. But we're gonna look at a couple things here in the Absarica, uh, the Absarica form or group, Volcanics. I think it's actually a super group because it has just so many different rock types in it. Um, and let's go over here to Chimney Rock where I think we can see a little better um, exposures of some of these different types of units. So right here on the face of Chimney Rock, put my stuff down again, um, we can actually see uh, several different layers. Usually the Absarica Volcanics is just, you don't see a lot of bedding or layering in it, but here we can actually see some of the bedding in it. And we can see there's a prominent sandy unit right here that's maybe oh, about two meters, maybe five, six feet uh, thick. A really sharp line uh, and then a unit with a lot of particles and chunks but then there's another sharp line at the top of that one that goes up into yet another one and this one includes an actually sort of a like a toaster or microwave sized particle in it then there's another sharp line above that and so we can see there's a, a series of events here that have laid down these deposits uh, one after another if we look closely, we can actually maybe make out another observation that's important, and that is if we look at this unit here, um, we can see that the particles, the clasts, the big chunks of rock, actually get bigger as you work your way up. They're very small at the bottom, and as you work your way up, they get a little bit bigger before you run into that sharp line that divides it from the next set of rocks uh, up above. So let's take a look at that and then I have an explanation that as you're thinking about what sort of process uh, might have gone into that, we'll see if we can come up with some ideas to explain 
that so there's the same thing looking at the chimney rock from the side separation from the wall but there's this package of rock we're kind of focusing on now where we can definitely see the class size the particle size increasing uh, upwards to some degree another nice exposure of it here sharp contact down low with the sand sandstone uh, and then the particles down here maybe golf ball size but as i work my way up a few feet now we're looking at particles that are more softball size and bigger um, almost bowling ball size but not quite uh, and so again we've got particles getting bigger as we go up so when we think about the processes that deposit these types of rocks we want to think about energy it obviously takes a lot more energy to move larger particles than it does smaller ones and if you think about a typical flood where a river maybe just floods an area um, what we would typically see there I've got a diagram for you here what we would typically see there is maybe something like this where initially there's a high energy um, component of the flood so it's going to move the big material right the bigger material in the river bottom the bed load the gravels and then as the energy of the flood wanes as the energy starts to wind down more fine grain deposits there this is what we call normal grading or a graded bed when we have large particles or coarse particles on the bottom and they get more fine grained as we go up but that's not what we see here remember we have the the small stuff on the bottom and the big stuff on top so we have something more similar to this where we have the small material at the bottom of the bed and it increases in size going up this is what's known as reverse grading so we have reverse grading or reverse graded beds here at chimney rock in uh, this unit just above us here and one way to explain these and this makes sense for um, these volcanic environments like we had with the Absarica volcanics 50 million years ago. Um, sure, you've got streams and you've got floods going down the streams, but you have such an abundance of sediments. So you've got ash, you've got the particles being shed off the mountain. Um, and so what you can, what you can uh, produce are these things called debris flows. And a debris flow is different than a flood. It has so much sediment and, and plastics and, and sand and gravel and debris, essentially, moving in it that it almost behaves more like a, a viscous material. It almost moves, uh, well, it does move more slowly and sluggishly. Maybe think of it more like a lava flow in terms of its consistency. And what happens is these debris flows move down a slope or down a drainage um, is because they're so thick and dense that the larger particles will actually sort of rise to the top of the flow like corks if you will um, and then once it st stops moving it basically solidifies quite quickly it, it the water that was kind of keeping it somewhat mobile drains out and all those particles get kind of frozen where they are and that's exactly what we're looking at here chimney rock is a debris flow deposit actually two of them possibly at least two or more stacked on top of each other uh, and separated by these sandy events which might be um, other sorts of floods or less energetic uh, types of movement down uh, down off the flanks of the volcano we're probably a good 10 to 15 miles here from the actual source of these uh, debris flows or the volcano that was shedding off this sediment it's actually a volcano called the sunlight volcano it's named for an area so what we'll do next is we'll stop uh, this little section and i'll tag on another video section that shows some of the cool features cutting across these so we'll say goodbye to chimney rock for now and its beautiful uh, debris flow deposit and we'll move on down the canyon okay so i've moved down the canyon a bit from chimney rock maybe i don't know a couple miles two or three miles uh, we're still in the same Absarica volcanics that we saw back at Chimney Rock. And you can see they just make these spectacular cliffs of uh, just sheer walls, amphitheaters. There's some really cool hoodoos on the skyline over there. So a few windows with some light showing through them. Um, but at times, as you're driving through this area, you'll occasionally see these fantastic dikes that are cutting 
right through the pile of the Absterica Volcanic. So I thought I'd stop at one of these and just point out a couple of things. Um, we'll get up close to this in a second and look at them. So these andesite dikes obviously formed after the volcanic sediments were laid down, but probably not too soon, too, too much later, because um, they're about the same age as the rocks themselves. And as you're driving through this canyon, if you were to plot up all of these dikes uh, on a map, and I just put together a very crude uh, map, just to kind of illustrate things a little bit. Um, if we have, um, so the highways here, Yellowstone's to the west, Cody's to the east, so the little squiggly line is more or less the highway. But as you intersect these dikes, um, their orientation changes a little bit, and that's because they're all radiating out from the centralized big volcano uh, that's responsible for all this volcanic uh, material in here. So the one the one right here that we're looking at, I just measured its orientation with a compass and it runs pretty much due north. Um, so we're probably somewhere in here with the main volcano that existed 50 million years ago to our north. Of course, this volcano is eroded today, so there's no cone or mountain even to see today. So what we have are these dikes and they kind of radiate out like spokes of a wheel and that helps us kind of reconstruct or kind of focus in on the area where the volcano might have been, along with other rocks that, you know, like magma, uh, like intrusive uh, rocks beneath the volcano, plumbing systems, the conduit that fed the volcano uh, at the surface. So kind of interesting. Um, we can spend a couple minutes looking uh, at this rock itself. Uh, it's kind of a medium gray in color. Um, it looks like it has in places some little tiny black specks. Those look like they're hornblende and maybe a little bit of biotite. So I feel pretty confident calling this an andesite. So we have an andesite dike, which is common for these big stratovolcanoes. If we look along the margin with the uh, with the the breccias, these big you know massive clasts cemented together. We can see that there's kind of a break here. We also see that the crystal size of the andesite decreases somewhat. So it's got a little bit larger crystals in the interior, which should make sense because presumably the dike was cooling much quicker along its margin. So you'd end up with much smaller crystals. Um, and then in the interior where it's a little more insulated, you end up with a little bit larger uh, crystals. There's also a little bit of a color change uh, looking at it. So the margins look like they're a little bit darker and then backing up here And I don't know if it's natural or maybe something man-made but right up in here There's definitely kind of a reddish hue on either side of the dike Which may be some oxidation of the sediments as the dike and its heat was uh, injected into the rocks themselves so pretty spectacular. Some of these, this one doesn't stick out, but as I'm dri driven through the canyon, uh, there's been a few that stick out like fins, stick out in relief. Yeah, now that I'm seeing this big red patch up here, that's gotta be maybe fire retardant or something else. So that red we saw back there may not be uh, natural, but another dike here cutting through the rocks. Uh, and this one kind of starts over here it's a little bit squiggly. You can see a little bit of it sticking out uh, just in the trees right there. Nice little kind of spire over on that side. Just these beautiful sort of fluted and sculpted rocks here in the Shoshone River Canyon. So just a little something to add on to our last stop at Chimney Rock. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying these. Um, I love coming out and doing these. Obviously it takes some effort uh, and some expense. So if you uh, are willing to and feel like you can donate a little bit and support uh, the efforts here. Always appreciate it. Otherwise, just keep enjoying. Uh, remember, there's a PayPal link on the description to the videos, also Venmo, um, and there's also a donate button at the top of the banner page on YouTube. So the Shoshone River Canyon in the Absarica Mountain Range in Northwest Wyoming.